We've got Taylan and Ethan here from our academy. We're going to look at the tendencies of athletes. We're just going to talk about these a little bit. A lot of players tend to have tendencies. They tend to only do the same things and it becomes very predictable. You see it with the bigs a lot. A lot of big guys catch the ball and the first thing they want to do is bounce the ball and they go nowhere. Well, the problem with that is good guards have, have scouted that and they know as soon as that guy's catching the ball, they're going to put the ball to the floor they're just going to dig at it and they're going to get it. So a lot of big guys, particularly at a young age, they get the ball stripped, all right? So as players, you want to be looking for tendencies. You want to look at, is this guy a shooter? Is this guy a driver? You want to know, does he like to shoot at the three? Does he only shoot intermediate? Is he a finisher at the rim? Does he post? Is he going only to his right all the time? Is he bringing the ball from his waist to shoot? Can you change the shot just by putting a hand above the ball, which risk of foul there, but can you change his shot by, if he, he has to bring it from his waist, can you make him uncomfortable there? So as he brings it up, he's got to change the way he shoots. Now, when you're playing on the ball, the important thing to note is, what is this guy? Is he a good shooter? Is he a good driver? Or is he both? Because the way you defend him will determine what his strengths and weaknesses are. And you want to take advantage of uh, his weaknesses. So if Talon were to be known to be a good shooter or driver or you're unsure, then you would guard him at what we call a safe distance. So the safe distance, if you just want to demonstrate it, you should be able to, from this standing start, be able to reach his stomach. Like that would be a safe distance. You should be able to, from that defensive stance, be able to reach forward and touch almost his navel with your fingertips. So we consider that a safe distance. If Talon were to be a, a driver and not a shooter, then Ethan could be a fraction way, encouraging the shot, but we still want to contest the shot if it goes up, if he starts to shoot the ball. But we also want to know whether he's a good shooter at three-point line, because if he's not, then we don't have to guard. We can provide a little bit more help for our teammates and encourage him to take that shot, knowing that there's likely to be a rebound at the end of it for our team. Now, if he happens to be not such a, a, a good uh, driver, but a really good shooter, then what we'd have is we'd have Ethan come right in and under, and now we're in and closer, so we're making him feel uncomfortable with the actual shot. So what we're forcing him to do here is actually drive. So, so what you'll notice with Ethan is Ethan's got his hand under the ball, to harass it and so he can dig up. A lot of referees like to blow the whistle when you hit down or slap down at the ball. If they see that, even if you don't hit the player, they're likely to call or blow the whistle. Whereas digging up on the ball is often a lot easier to get the ball and you're less likely to make contact with the player who has the ball. Um, and it's all hara also harassing them to keep the ball up, which helps prevent the drive. Okay, as well as putting pressure on the shot. So being up and under can be uncomfortable for guys that like to shoot. Thanks for checking out this video. Please take a moment to subscribe and leave a like if you have not already done so. Feel free to comment to share your knowledge or start a conversation. See you next time.